Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to the Zor Education. Um, we are talking about vector product of two vectors in a three-dimensional space. And um, we have actually spent a lot of time analyzing the properties of the vector product, including like commutative and anti-commutative distributive property, multiplication by null vector, etc. Um, what's actually interesting is that we were trying to analyze all these properties from um, usually from geometrical uh, standpoint. Uh, at the same time, during um, the proof of distributive law for vector products, which is this one, at the very end of the proof, I have introduced a representation of the participating vectors, uh, A and B in this particular case, um, in their coordinate form. What's interesting is to express the whole um, vector product um, in the coordinate form. Uh, right now, we were always based on representation in, in geometrical form that if you multiply the lengths of two vectors by sine of the angle between them, you will get um, the, the lengths of the vector product. And as far as the direction, it was defined again geometrically as the one which is perpendicular to both of them, perpendicular to the plane, actually, which is defined by these two um, vectors. So now we will try to do it algebraically using the coordinate representation of vectors A and B. Um, now, to do this, we will use uh, the properties of the uh, vector product, which we have already um, discussed and uh, and proved actually. So one of the property is the distributive law, as I was just saying. And um, another property which we will be using is if you have coordinate system and you have unit vectors on each coordinate, I J and K. That's how they usually um, named. So these are unit vectors along each axis of the coordinate system. Then what's interesting is that I uh, vector product by J equals to K, J vector product with K equals to I, and k vector product i equals to j. Now, why is that? Well, we already discussed it, but let me just repeat. It's obviously because the length of them is equal to 1. The sine of the angle between them is 90 degrees, which means the, uh, the angle is 90 degrees, so the sine is 1. And k, for instance, is exactly the one which is perpendicular to both i and j, um, especially uh, the direction is important. If you go from I to J, then the rule of uh, the, the corkscrew actually points upwards. Or if you wish, if you look from the point, end point of the K vector, you will see that direction from I to J is positive uh, counterclockwise. So these are properties as well as the general distributive law which we will be using to derive the representation of the vector product in coordinate form. Now, um, so let's say we have two vectors, vector u, which has coordinate representation u1, u2, u3, and vector v, which is v1, v2, v3. Now, 
vector w would be their vector product. And what we would like to know is how w1, w2, w3 expressed in terms of u1, u1, u3, and v1, v2, v3. So that's the purpose of this, uh, of this very small theoretical research. So we will use, as I was saying, distributive law and uh, the multiplication of the unit vectors. Now, what does it mean in terms of representation of the vector u in terms of u1, u2, u3, uh, if we will be using the, uh, the unit vectors along the coordinates. Now, obviously, vector u can be represented as u1 i plus u2 j plus u3 k. Now, this is multiplication of the vector by a constant u1, u2, and u3 are real numbers. Now, um, again, we did talk about this before, but let me just repeat again. So if these are a uh, coordinate system, so you have a point with coordinates u1, u2, u3, which is the end point of this vector, right? So that's what it means that the vector u has these coordinates means it starts from the zero and ends at this particular point. Now, if you will drop the perpendicular from this point to x, y um, plane, and from this point, which is a projection, this is a, let's put it b. So what do we know um, about these segments? We know that this segment is y coordinate, which is u2. This segment is x coordinate, which is u1. And this segment, the vertical one, um, it's uh, u3. Now let me connect this and do this. So you will see how it looks. So this is a point in the space, three-dimensional space. This is the projection of the xy uh, area. And this is a projection onto, uh, onto the Z. Let's put it point C. So OC is equal to U3, same as AB, by the way, because it's a parallelogram. If you look from this, it, it actually it's a, um, it's a rectangle. If you will take a look on this, on, on this plane itself, OC, AB plane, um, it just looks like a parallelogram because we look from the side, right? Same thing as this. Uh, we need uh, points D and E. Now, O, D, B, E looks like a parallelogram, but actually it's a, a, it's a rectangle uh, if you look from the top. Um, so, it's obvious that the vector U3, uh, the vector uh, U is equal to sum of the vectors um, OC, OC vector plus OB, right? Sum of these two vectors is equal to this. At the same time, OB is equal to sum of OD plus OE. OB is equal to sum of these two, because of the rule of the parallelogram. So, therefore, we can see that our vector u, which is OA, it's equal to OC vector plus o, o, OD and plus OE. And each one of them is equal to correspondingly um, OC is equal to U3 times K plus OD is actually U1 
times i plus and OE is equal to J multiplied by U2. So that's the representation which I have just written on the top. So let's put it aside. That's simple case. And now let's use this particular representation and V correspondingly is V1 I plus V2 J plus V3 K. We will use these, uh, this, this representation of uh, each of the vectors um, to derive their vector product. Now, if you multiply this by this as the vector product, uh, you can use the distributive law, right? So, u times v is equal to, well, let me first do it with 1. u product multiplied by v1i plus v2j plus v3k, right? And now, since my distributive law works in this particular case, actually it was proven for two vectors, summed together. It's a times, no, a, a plus b times c. So a times b plus c. But at the same time, um, obviously it's true for the three ones, three uh, uh, vectors which we are adding together. Because first you can apply it to two and then to, to the third one. So that's easy. So let me just open it up. It's u1 times v1i plus u times v2j plus u times v3k equals. Now, first of all, I can uh, take v1 outside of the vector product. That's just another uh, law which we were using. Uh, we proved it, actually. It's associative law versus associative, uh, associative law of the vector product relative to the multiplication by a constant, right? So V1 goes out, and instead of U, I will use its representation. So it would be U1I plus U2J plus U3K times I plus V2 goes out, and U times uh, J, instead of U, I will put exactly the same thing. Times J plus, and V3, V3, U times K, and instead of U, I will use this, same thing. I will use again my distributive law, like a plus b times c, right? And in this case, it's it's three vectors which are multiplied by by the force. So I can do it one by one. And what I will also use immediately here, the following: you see, i times i. You know that i times i as any two vectors. Uh, as any vector multiplied by itself should give the zero result is, as a vector product. Why? Because the sign of the angle between one vector and another, since they are the same, the, the angle is zero, so the sign is zero, right? So something like i times i would, would, would never exist, actually. Now, j times i, well, I have to really write it down here so we do not have any problems with this. So let me again write these equalities. I times J equals K, uh, J times K equals I, and K times uh, I equals to J. Now, if we reverse the sequence, you know that uh, 
uh, the vector product is anti-commutative, so it would be uh, like i times j is k by j times i would be minus k, right? So I will use this property. So let's see. Uh, so this one times this would be zero because it's i and i. Now this is j times i. j times i is minus k. And the product is u2 v1. OK, u2 v1 uh, minus k. So let me just put minus in front of it. OK. Now u3 v1 would be ki, which is j with a plus. So u3 v1 j with a plus. Here, uh, i times j would be k, right? So it's plus u1 v2 k. Now, j and j would give 0, so we skip this one. K and J, K and J would be minus I. So we'll have minus U3 V2 I. Okay, and the third one is um, I times K. I times K is minus J. So it would be minus U1 V3 j. Now j times k is i, so it's plus u2 v3 i, and k times k would be 0. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so what do we have here? collect i first. u2 v3 minus u3 v2 i. Now j. j is u3 v1, so it's plus u3 v1 minus u1 v3 j plus k and k, u1, v2, u1, v2 minus u2, v1, k. So that's the final representation of the vector product in uh, coordinates. Now, if the vector product as a vector is the sum of these three uh, vectors. Each one of them is the unit vector multiplied by something. So what is this something? This something is the corresponding coordinate, right? So if i is the unit vector along x coordinate, then this in parentheses is the x coordinate, right? So basically what we can say is that w, which is u times v in coordinate forms, is represented as u2 v3 minus u3 v2, comma, u3 v1 minus u1 v3, comma, and u1 v2 minus u2 v1, close parenthesis. That's three coordinates of our vector product. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I do suggest you to do exactly the same kind of um, derivation just yourself without looking at my notes, uh, etc. And you should really uh, come up with exactly the same result. It would be a nice um, uh, kind of uh, exercise for you. And remember always to, to ask yourself why you're doing this or that particular um, simplification, for instance. Like, I was using these formulas for 
multiplication, vector multiplication of the unit vectors. I was using distributive law. Um, what else? Have we, uh, I was using associative law of multiplication of vectors and the constant. Um, I was using um, the result of the multiplication of the vector by itself. Vector multiplication, I mean, is uh, zero because the sine of the angle between the vectors is equal to zero. So all these properties, I would like you just mentally uh, just acknowledge to yourself that you are doing this because that's extremely important. Don't do it mechanically. It should be really based on certain laws. Well, that's it for this very short lecture. Thank you very much and good luck.